This is the story about the old Quincy Copper Mine. This old mine is located way up in the northern part of Michigan. The lifespan of a mine depends totally on ore reserves, along with the grade of the ore and also the ease of mining the ore. Most mines will have a lifespan of around 20 to 25 years. A lot of mines in the past only lasted a few years, while others like the Empire Mine, the Sullivan Mine, and the Quincy Mine lasted a century. If you haven't watched the video on the Empire Mine, I'll leave a link in the description box below, as well as a link at the end of this video. The Quincy Mine came about due to what you could call a blunder in government operations. There was two different companies that had recorded claims in the same area, and the government ended up issuing both companies the rights to the claims. Because there was what looked to be a promising ore deposit, both the companies decided to merge and make the mine. In 1846, the merger between the Northwest Mining Company and the Portage Mining Company was done, and the Quincy Mining Company was formed. The Quincy Mine was a mine that had some very unique engineering designs. Its number two shaft was the deepest shaft in the world at its time, it reached a depth of 9,260 feet and went off at an angle of 55 degrees. The number 7 shaft is unique in that is was driven on a catenary curve. It also had the world's largest steam-powered plant. This plant was needed for the hoist to be able to reach great depths to be able to bring up ore and workers. This hoist weighed more than 880 tons and could lift 10 tons of ore up the shaft at a speed of 36 miles per hour. This alone saved over $6,000 in fuel bills in its first year of operation. The hoist sat on the largest concrete slab ever poured at that time. The slab alone contained almost 3,200 cubic yards of cement and had over 8 tons of reinforcements. Life working at the Quincy mine was also good. The company owners were known for being a bit on the generous side, they figured out early on that by housing the workers in nice homes, the workers would most likely stay and that way there would be little turnover in staff. So the houses they ended up building were nice homes with electricity, with hot and cold running water. This was a luxury back in a time when most mining towns being built were just tent towns and shacks. When mining copper, there were two types of mining. There was fissure mining and there was a middleoid mining. The Quincy mine was done by amidaloid mining. Amidules or amidales form when the gas bubbles or vesicles in volcanic lava are infilled with a secondary mineral such as calcite, quartz, chlorite, or one of the zeolites. This proved to be much more productive than fissure mining and allowed the Quincy mine to mine a lower grade ore and still make a profit. Over time, the Quincy mine bought the claims that surrounded the mine. These claims and mines were the Powabic mine the Mesnord Mine, the Pontiac, and the Franklin Mine. After these other properties and mines were bought out, the Quincy Mine became known as Old Reliable, as the Quincy Mine Company paid a dividend to investors every year from 1868 through to 1920. Of course, a mine of this size needed a mill, so there was a large stamp mill. Stamp mills need a lot of water, so a mill was built close to the lake and had its own rail line to haul the ore. Over time, there was so much sand material from stamping that ran into the lake that the company had its own dredge to reclaim this sand. This dredged sand contained copper that earlier stamping technology had not been able to separate out. Then in May 1898, the Quincy Mining Company started construction of the Quincy Smelter on the site of the old Puwabic Mill. Before that, the mine was having its ore smelted by the Lake Superior Smelter. During the 100 years that the Quincy Mine was in operation, it was only closed down in 1931 for a brief period of time due to low copper prices. It opened back up for the war effort as copper was a much-needed metal. In all its years of operation, the Quincy Mine produced 424,000 tons of copper. You can still go to the old Quincy Mine site today. In fact, there are tours that will take you to see inside this old mine. There are also tours of the old smelters, so if you are up in northern Michigan and don't have a lot to do, you can always take in a tour. I hope you enjoyed this short story about the old Quincy Copper Mine. Please like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you more old lost mine stories. Mm -hmm.